Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the high SEO material. I'm Brian McDaniel, and I will be your guide on this journey through the list of the high SEO material for the psychiatry questions on the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam. I've already made nine videos which cover all the material in depth. This video is just a quick introduction to the list of what material is most and least important, with a few test taking tips thrown in. I'll start with the highest yield topics and work my way down to the lowest yield. The high yield rating is a scale from 0 to 10 that gives you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Focusing your efforts on the high yield topics will yield you more correct answers for a given amount of time studied. A high yield rating of one means you have about a 10% chance of seeing a question on the step one for that topic. Uh, five means you have rough, roughly a 50-50 chance of seeing a question for that topic on the exam. Then a high yield rating of 10 means you're almost definitely gonna see at least one question and you'll probably see more than one question. The high yield rating is a pseudo-scientific calculation that takes into account a bunch of different factors, including my experience, the USMLE content outline, uh, but the biggest thing is how frequently each topic appears in retired step one questions. So just some overall tips for the psych section. Uh, it may surprise you how few questions there are on the medical board exam for psychiatry. It's a really important field that you're going to encounter no matter what specialty you go into, but for some reason it's not really emphasized in the step one exam. Uh, you should expect to see about seven questions on the exam, which really isn't many considering you're going to have 320 something questions. I'm not really sure why there isn't more of an emphasis, maybe there's just more basic science faculty writing questions, maybe some of the questions would be too easy because even the general public knows what ADHD is and what depression is, um, so it would be tougher to write challenging questions. But at least some of these questions that you do get are usually pretty easy, so with just a little bit of studying you should be able to get these psych questions right pretty easily. Another question that comes up a lot is whether the questions on the exam are going to be based on DSM-4 or 5. Uh, the newer one, 5, came out like a couple years ago or so. Um, but for the most part, I would say don't worry about this. Um, most of the questions can be answered with information from DSM-4 or 5, so it doesn't really matter. They haven't like specifically gone out of their way to find questions that would have been correct before and now are incorrect based on 5. Um, and in general, you probably should just de-emphasize studying the DSM criteria overall. Those will be important in your rotations, but if you've just got a couple weeks before your medical board exam, don't spend a whole lot of time reading through DSM. You need to know the general definitions and concepts related to the diseases, but you don't have to get into real specifics about the DSM criteria. Like you won't have to, you know, distinguish between a disorder that meets four out of the nine criteria or something like that. It won't be that tough and that close of a call. Things will be really obvious. It'll be really fit depression or PTSD or whatever the question's about. So we'll start with the really high yield material, uh, the downer or de depressant abuse, withdrawal, and overdose. Overall, that topic gets a high yield rating of 10 but I've also broken it down into little subcategories as well because um, it is so high yield that even some of the subparts of it have a pretty high yield rating as well. Um, so I give the opioid or heroin overdose as well as the use of naloxone, a high yield rating of seven. Alcohol withdrawal or delirium tremens, I give a high yield rating of four. This is often a patient who's in the hospital for something unrelated to alcoholism, but then develops withdrawal symptoms over a couple of days. Uh, so you want to know the symptoms of how that presents so you can identify it and then also how to treat it. Uh, the uses and indications for benzodiazepines is also going to be given a high yield rating of four. So, you know, anxiolytics and alcohol withdrawal. Opioid withdrawal, I'm giving a high yield rating of three. 
So just be able to identify what that looks like. Uh, benzo overdose in probably suicide attempts, maybe even a kid accidentally taking a bottle, um, and how you would use flumazenil. It's going to be given a high yield rating of three also. The mechanism of action of benzodiazepines has a high yield rating of two. And then also alcoholisms and the complications of alcoholism, those are going to be very high yield things, but since I didn't cover them in this playlist, I haven't list them here. The personality disorders are also very high yield. I'm giving overall the group a high yield rating of 10 because you're almost definitely going to see one question on the exam from this. And then I've broken it down into the specific types as well because some are high, higher yield than others. Schizoid's going to get a 5, borderline and histrionic get a 3, antisocial 2 high yield rating, avoidant and dependent get 1s, and then schizotypal, paranoid, narcissistic, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders are going to get a high yield rating of zero. I wouldn't focus nearly as much attention on these as the other ones. Antidepressants, also another high yield topic, getting a high yield rating of nine. Focus your efforts on the side effects, in particular the anticholinergic side effects, seizures with bupropion. Uh, sexual dysfunction, priapism with trazodone, and serotonin syndrome are the most important topics there. But you may also see questions on the mechanism of action of some of those medications and the indications for when you should use them. Antipsychotics also get a high yield rating of nine. Again, side effects are going to be the most important part of this section. Uh, focus your attention on neuroleptic malignant syndrome, extrapyramidal symptoms, and hyperprolactinemia. Some other high yield topics, different types of depression and related suicide. You want to be able to make the diagnosis and differentiate it from similar sounding disorders such as bereavement or adjustment disorder, or bipolar disorder. Then there's the upper or stimulant abuse category. Uh, you can focus on the clinical presentation of intoxication as well as the mechanism of action for things like cocaine and the amphetamines, meth, et cetera. Now we're getting into the medium, sort of intermediate high yield ratings. Mood stabilizers are gonna get a high yield rating of five. Focus on the side effects here as well, hypothyroidism or diabetes insipidus for lithium, thromocytopenia from valproate are a couple Pretty big high yield examples of things you should focus on. Bereavement's going to get a high yield rating of four. So mainly you're going to have to differentiate that from a normal stress response to a grief situation or other psychiatric conditions like depression. Then we have the category of conditions where there isn't anything physically wrong with the patient. I'm going to give that a high yield rating of four and broken down further, somatization gets a three, malingering and fictitious disorder get a high yield rating of one. Just be able to know the differences between those three main categories there. And then schizophrenia, I'm giving a high yield rating of three. Be able to know how to make the diagnosis based on the question stem, and then also some of the pathophysiology with the neurotransmitters. Now we're into the lower yield material that's probably still worth studying. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff, so you might as well spend a few minutes going over it. The eating disorders get a high yield rating of two, one for each bulimia and anorexia. You want to be able to differentiate between the two of those and know some of the complications that arise in both those disorders. Generalized anxiety, I'm also giving it to basically just be able to make the diagnosis for that. Bipolar disorder is going to get a two as well. Basically just being able to identify mania based on the clinical picture. Hallucinogen abuse, also going to get a two. What are the signs of intoxication for things like PCP and LSD? PTSD is only going to get a one on the high yield rating. And buspirone or buspar, an anxiolytic for GAD, that's going to get a high yield rating of one. Here's a list of the things I give a high yield rating of zero that I still covered for one reason or another. Usually it was just kind of for completeness. If I left some of the stuff out, the videos kind of would have seemed fragmented because um, these are 
important topics for clinical settings, but for whatever reason, they don't seem to be tested as much. So you will see these topics when you go through my videos, um, but know that you shouldn't spend a ton of time on them because they are very low yield. And then here are the list of topics that I rate as a high yield rating of zero or no yield that I didn't cover. So you won't find this material in my videos. Again, some of these things may be important to your rotations later on, but if you're just trying to get through the exam, I wouldn't waste any time studying this material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it useful or have any suggestions for how to improve it, please do comment below. I really appreciate that. It helps me out. Also, if you're watching on a computer, you can click on this black box here to be taken directly to the first video in the psychiatry section, which is going to cover all the different mood disorders. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.